Scientists say it's a matter of when, not if, there will be a major earthquake in the new magic seismic zone centered about 160 miles south of St. Louis. In the heart of America, seismic activity rumbles beneath the surface, signaling a potential catastrophe in the making. Scientists have recently detected alarming signs of an impending earthquake in the infamous New Madrid seismic zone. This seismic zone has a dark history of unleashing devastating tremors, raising concerns about the potential scale of the impending disaster. As anticipation mounts, the world braces itself for the potentially catastrophic consequences of this seismic event. Join us as we delve into the unfolding crisis in the New Madrid seismic zone, where fear and uncertainty grip the nation. Shocking terrors in New Madrid. Scientists have just detected seismic activity in the New Madrid seismic zone, which is popular for regular earthquakes. But what makes these pending earthquakes different, even though the magnitudes have remained moderate, with the largest one recorded to be 2.3, is that this could be the forerunner to a much bigger seismic event. Among the specialists, there is a continuous discussion about the seismic threat produced by NMSZ. Some fear that the absence of surface strain in some areas of the seismic zone for the last 10 years indicates no accumulation of tension at depth and may thus reflect a declining hazard potential. Nevertheless, other scientists warn that we should not overlook the possibility of big earthquakes in the area because of its history and recent discoveries. Developed geophysical mapping methods can visualize the fault structures of NMSC in depth, not before seen in detail. Such maps uncover a complicated system of active faults, not confined to only what is usually considered to be the recognized arms of the seismic belt. One of the NMSZ's specialties is the occurrence of sand blows, which are the surface expressions of liquefaction that have occurred in the past due to earthquakes. Sand blown offers much needed information about the area's magnitude and the recurrence of early earthquakes. Recent research has hinted at the possibility that the large amount of groundwater in the sediments above the fault lines may somehow influence the seismicity of the NMSZ. The pressure of this water may contribute to the stress on the faults, which may hamper their ability to slip and produce earthquakes. Research continues into whether human activities like resource extraction and reservoir construction can be the reason for the region's seismic instability. However, it is still not clear what the exact influence of human activities on seismic risk is, but human actions can indeed change earthquake risks. Implementing predictive modeling into seismology has enhanced predictive tools, allowing specialists to forecast disasters in NMSC. These models, which are based on previous earthquakes' past happenings, current seismic activity, and geological details, very well simulate earthquake scenarios. In the dim light of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, NMSZ, a deadly secret watcher, scientists try to unveil the fictions of a seismic future in which they can predict earthquakes. SCO deciphering and the coloring of the future combine historical data with up-to-date science and technology to listen to these quakes of the future. Predicting the future using history's compass is where our incredibly predicting journey starts. Every earthquake becomes a breadcrumb trail of data, magnitude, location, and depth that stitched together amounts to making sense of which pieces of seismic jiggling experienced in the NMSZ hide telltale patterns. These information sources are only the first paragraph of our evolution apocalypse, providing a background for the present state of being. The NMSZ has a heartbeat indicated by the seismic network, which records tremors in real time. In this way, each tremor is a beat in the zone's rhythm that goes on. This broadcast of seismic movement is the impulse that models with predictive power use to detect any abnormality or similarities that might suggest an earthquake preparing in the soil. Earth's nature can open up an amazing world of geological processes. When you look at the results of these processes just below the surface, you will discover the complexity of the game of life. Predictive models trying to dig themselves through this underground world use knowledge about faults, rock types, and accumulated stress fields to study how seismic energy transfers and how it may increase. It's not a simple puzzle. However, each component is necessary for forecasting the seismic ability of the region. 
We take simulation as our fortune-telling device, taking on the meaningful role of being the almanac of history and possessing the present. Predictive models run scenarios using data and equipment, each representing a story about future earthquakes and what could happen. These calculations are not done blindly, they are performed according to the already known laws of physics and the story depicted by the data. Our forecasting profits have added a new one from machine learning. They devour large volumes of seismic data after each quake or tremor until they learn almost anything from the lessons. They trace down those minute patterns that are invisible to the naked human eye, perfecting them with each pass and thus they learn faster and faster to anticipate the complexities of our Mother Earth's aloofness. However, is there some reason we can predict but cannot also prepare? The potential of predictive modeling goes far beyond just data-driven insight, as it also enables us to guide and empower. Planners, engineers, and policymakers, every one of them, take notice of the model outputs memory-wise to design stronger defenses, place the population in posture, and devise ways to save lives and properties. The forms used for predicting the NMSZ are the songs of science, and the joint action of geologists, seismologists, and computer scientists. As the event unfolds, their voices will be musical, unfolding a song that never should have been part of our destiny. Still, be it the response to the Earth's quaking or the reaction to the wrath of its nature, we will not go unprepared since our guardians are alert enough to provide an early warning. Is history repeating itself? Would this just be like the 1811 earthquake? the tragedy that struck in 1811. The New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 to 1812, together with their destructive waves, would never be forgotten in the history of the United States. The event, which occurred for the first time in history, caused the earth to shake with a sudden, powerful force that made the rivers change their course, the lakes gain new areas, and it could be felt over two million square miles. On the 16th of December, 1811, there was a strange phenomenon of unknown cause in the USA. In the early hours of the day, at exactly 2 to 3 a.m., the Earth heaved up and down, inch by inch, to emerge as if preparing to erupt. In particular places like Carolina, it took great hits, and although there was never a casualty, this is the one that gave us curious questions about what could have happened. This earthquake happened for the first time, with a magnitude of 7.5. It caused slight damage to the city because of the sparse population, but it surely affected the natural condition. It should be stressed again that on January 23, 1812, a second major tremble with a magnitude of 7.3 was recorded. Thus, the landscape and terrain were altered, and there was huge soil liquefaction where solid ground turned into liquid. At 3 p.m. on February 7, 1812, the supposed ultimate and most powerful quake, estimated at 7.5 in magnitude, happened. It was perceived over a very large area and was strong enough to cause the Mississippi River's water stream to lose its flow for a while. In the center of North America, the Americas, where the Earth was going to start a frightening dance already more than two centuries ago, the Earth shook, the rivers spilt over the riverbanks, and the bugle called the world's attention. The series of seismic events, better known as the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 to 1812, brought about the most thrilling scenes of Mother Nature's history, crashing into all the imaginable boundaries with a force that could not be ignored. The genesis of this earthquake epic took place at the southwestern end of the Marshall District of Arkansas, where the land heaved and growled, tearing huge holes in the Earth's surface. As baffled settlers who hadn't been able to prepare next to the blows, they witnessed the destruction of all they knew, and knew currently nothing but cold and fear. The awesome forests were just tools in the master hand of an earthquake, and the earth itself was so modified that it was turned into a sphere that no one could imagine. Native Missouri to the east, streams fell the full range of the second act. New Madrid, a small town, was the biggest victim during this great event. The community's name became synonymous with earthquakes, establishing the New Madrid Zone. There used to be mansions, today all that stands is debris and the remains of the once grand homes. The ground where the town stood was neither a quake nor a vibration, but more like a conjoined contraction, transfiguring the surroundings into a utopia of chaos. Tennessee's share in the plot, survival through destruction, 
was one of loss and creation. With the land expanding and contracting, a beautiful smell of life came with the Mississippi quake. The water called the land, and the deluxe version of the map was shoved under the shadow of the liquid hands of the Mississippi. In Kentucky, shuddering was felt every day, everywhere, and what rattled were even the strongest foundations of residents' homes and inner peace. The same land that was giving companionship to the settlers had now become their most formidable adversary. The tremors had stretching arms, a little effect that made every distant city too far away to be situated outside the radius of New Madrid's magic. In Boston, the bell tower rang and the walk path cracked. This was the upturned face of the country's capital. It was practically a doom, but still a symbol of its strength. The Mississippi River, an artery of the land, played an amazing role in the backflow process, which accepted notions of the impossible that could not be interpreted. These walks of history speak to us in this way. These events happened long ago and announced to humans that the Earth was more dominant. The New Madrid earthquake had negative impacts on river flow, created new lakes, and changed the course of history. These were the words that showed us our right spot in that natural world, a lesson of humility that was inscribed in the language of the land. We narrate the story of the New Madrid era in awe and admiration for the powers that shall come underneath our shoes. This narrative is deeply embedded in the soil of the struck regions. It represents power, resilience, and the eternal spirit of those who have rebuilt their wasted lives from the ruins. A resident of New Madrid gave one of the most graphical and touching narrations of the earthquakes. In a letter to Lorenzo Dow in 1816, she related the night's events to December 16, 1811, when the first earthquake occurred. The earth thundered and bucked, dispersing immense rifts through which airstreams of stinky vapor appeared. The sky was covered with an evil din, and the huge bonfires lit under the forests reflected the result in the sky. In her, in his memoir, Brian spoke of the fear that came in waves when the Mississippi River ran backwards, producing waterfalls and flooding the forests. The earthquakes of New Madrid in 1811 to 1812 were cataclysmic, which raised the fear of the people and wonder among the observers and compelled them to immerse themselves into the depth and inspirational challenge of their inner life, within which they had an intense inquiry with the age-old questions about life, reality, and human significance. Within the surroundings of the quakes, water just flew out of the subsoil. The settlers' reactions were just spontaneous and wild. The ground under them swayed and waves of destruction were unleashed with houses felled and trees merged with the earth. The Mississippi River, where the region's blood stayed fresher, impurities dissolving with the crowd, boiled menacingly, the water ascending in gigantic waves. People would wrap themselves around any possible crippling ground they could once stand on, while their cries could not be heard anymore because of the ear-bleeding earth rumblings. Indians, as the Native American tribes considered them, have had certain religious values attached to the earthquakes. To them, the fact that with the red power, Tecumseh's prophecy of fighting against encroaching settlers was to be fulfilled, was an eschatological event in which the Native Americans saw the spiritual forces working for them, an unmistakable symbol of their need to stand united and fight back for their lands. On the other hand, very far away, an immense interest in the quakes has just cropped up. Seismology was in its infancy, and the quakes falling under this new umbrella were a great riddle to solve. The readers were not the exception. The savants and lay people alike were obsessed by those stories of the ground trembling like the sea during the storm, the sun obscured by the streaks of the matter we know today as dust and the smell that bore the sulfurous flavor in the air. This destructive event paved the way for earthquake studies in America, after scientists realized that one is not supposed to explain blind people. The New Madrid earthquakes resonated everywhere, but in the distant oceans they were only a lazy roll of the drum, a footnote of interest in a world with many other things on its mind. The very mention of the disasters made a European name for them, but science saw the constant account and discussion in global scholarly circles contribute to improving understanding of natural disasters. This will have been one of those reminders of how powerful the planet is, a power far beyond measure that may reach even the most distant shorelines. Today, the tale is told with an interest in the new Madrid earthquakes. 
and regard for humankind's helplessness in the face of nature's violent power. The reactions of these two events are carved into the national memory. These speed bumps in the road of time demonstrate the lasting contributions of these given days in energy, politics, and history. However, the current studies of the New Madrid Seismic Zone reveal that things can easily move from calm to a crescendo. How will this shape the future? Stay tuned. The Obvious Signs of a Looming Quake As pointed out, such danger is not occurring just in the New Madrid area, but is a continuous, growing danger. The decrease in the knowledge level about where the earthquake rupture occurs on the crust has made several patterns of faults meaningful to seismologists for generating significant earthquakes. Technology of Tracking Tremors Today's technology is redound to the benefit and capacity of researchers now equipped with sophisticated gear and equipment to monitor the seismic zone in New Madrid as never before. In 1974, more than 100 cases were documented, ranging from small to moderate, which is enough information to know that the area is active. As everyone already knows, the earthquakes that occur from time to time and are caused by the tectonic plate movement could be understood as relieving the stress on the Earth while at the same time drawing attention to a possible major event in the future. Moreover, the latent depth subsea faults are similar to the California subsea faults, but riverside faults in the riverbed have also been detected and studied. However, it's important to note that even with such, a lot is likened to the chaotic zones. This means the seismic zone has several branches. While scientists try to provide speculation on the next quake, we can't help but ask, what could be the cause of these disasters? The Cottonwood Grove Fault. These quakes were certainly tremors, but in his mind, they were a massive choreography that rearranged the terrain and left memories of amazement and awe in all who witnessed them. Although some knew it, the sleeping giant beneath the Midwest's fertile soils remained concealed. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, so widely known for its maze of old faults, had been sleeping for centuries. Yet, as the North American plate moved, it piled up stress along the fault lines it could not see. Pressure wanted to liberate itself, and when it happened, the surface of the world twisted in reaction. The Cottonwood Grove Fault, a silent boss resting beneath northeastern Arkansas, was the first to slide. In mid-morning on December 16, 1811, it released something that caused havoc for hundreds of miles. The terrain was as if a huge blanket had been shaken up by invisible forces. Rivers found new ways, and forests gave in without sound. The first quake, however, was just the start of many. Next, a series of equally extreme aftershocks came. They were the planet's tremors, whose reverberations represented the powerful energy discharge in the fault lines as they settled into new positions. The earthquakes from these quakes were mind-blowing. Estimates range from 7.0 to 8.8, .8, making them two or three of the largest earthquakes in the east of the Rockies Mountains. The land witnessed this power as vast areas of upheaval and subsidence served as a warning that the Earth was changing its shape. Maybe the most amazing event was when the Mississippi River flipped its direction. However, where the land rose and fell, the river's flow was disrupted, thus creating waterfalls, something that had never been there before. The mighty Mississippi now flows backwards. It was so hard to believe that sight, a demonstration of the unfathomable might below our souls. Today, the New Madrid earthquakes are nothing more than a grim reminder that the planet is a living entity. They confuse our perception of seismic risk through the new boundaries of tectonic plates far from the known. The shocks of 1811 to 1812 were a whisper from the heart of the past, a condition that the Earth holds that might not have been fully revealed. Yet on the ground, scarred by the sudden violence, we realize our position on the planet. The New Madrid earthquakes were not just a chain of events. They were an epiphany, one in which Earth spoke, and we were given no option but to listen. 200 years ago, the central United States suffered a series of earthquakes that were so strong that they are still the subject of study and entertainment today. The New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 to 1812 were not only spectacular for their strength, but also for stirring up questions about their origins. Deep in the belly of the Mississippi River Valley, the real foot rift stands as visible proof of an ancient scar on the crust of our planet. 
What failed in the rift, where the continent used to try to pull apart, is now home to the new Madrid seismic zone. Inherent to rift's deficits is their vulnerability to the recurrence of faults, with stresses accumulating over a range of time. When this stress surpasses the strength of the rock, it is released in the form of earthquakes. The impact of the Ice Age is reflected in the seismic activity of the new Madrid region and in seismicity itself. The colossal weight of glaciers that once engulfed parts of North America pulled down the continents and distorted the crust. When these glaciers melted and withdrew, the land started to uplift, which also happens today. Such an adjustment can amount to the accumulation of force, which can give rise to an earthquake. Fluid movement in the Earth's crust can also cause seismic activity. Fluid injection or extraction may occur naturally or be man-made, and this can affect the pressure on faults. In the case of the New Madrid event, the elevations of the Mississippi River and its tributaries, as well as the existence of deep-seated fluids may have contributed to the state of the fault stress regime. Aftershocks are a common phenomenon after a great earthquake, and the New Madrid events were no exception. Such tremors belong to the mechanism that helps the lithosphere regain the balance of stress after a big seismic event. The ripple effects of the New Madrid earthquakes lasted for years, reinforcing the intense magnitude of the tremors on the geology of that region. The New Madrid seismic zone, far from the edge of a tectonic plate, is also under the control of forces that drive plate tectonics. The North American plate is moving, and stresses from this motion can travel deep into the interior, increasing the region's seismic potential, including the New Madrid area. As in the case of the 1811 to 1812 earthquakes, human activity did not contribute to the events, but is a factor in modern seismic studies. These processes, reservoir-induced seismicity and hydraulic fracturing, are now acknowledged as causes of earthquakes in certain locations around the world. Such constituents illustrate the intricate interplay between earthquakes' natural and anthropogenic triggers. Earthquakes can be caused by a series of reasons, but their effects are the same. How drastic is the impact caused by earthquakes? If the ground beneath you begins to tremble and vibrate, that can be interpreted as an indiscernible force that not only shakes the environment, but also upends whatever you use to anchor yourself to the world. This is the grim side of an earthquake. The worst of its power can produce a maximum impact that can be felt by people and their environment. The main effect of an earthquake is the shaking of the earth, a huge jerk that can make even the strongest buildings, roads, and bridges fall in the blink of an eye. The importance of the shaking depends on what degree it is. However, it is often the greatest at the epicenter, where the energy is released. The Earth's cracks and surface faulting result in scars on the land surface. These faults can rip through for miles, displacing surroundings in their wake and permanently reshaping surrounding geography. One of the worst consequences of ground failure during an earthquake is that the ground can collapse, slide, or become much softer. This is summarized as slope failures, such as landslides or liquefaction like a flow of liquids when solids behave like liquid ground. Structures over land can sink or collapse and restoration of damage in areas where the land is characterized by loose soil or steep slopes can be extensive. An earthquake may start a fire when a gas line breaks and the electrical system stops working. Floods may also happen when a dam or levee is damaged. The casualties of secondary disasters keep on accumulating, making recovery efforts more difficult. The main shock is followed by aftershocks, which are hundreds of smaller earthquakes that can continue for days, weeks, or even months. Each aftershock is Thomas's evidence that the Earth does not rest and could impede recovery and rescue. Beyond the actual destruction, the emotional toll of a major earthquake is incredibly deep. People get killed, families become homeless, and communities are forced to bury the dead and reconstruct what was lost. The psychological effect might transcend generations, and the worry of the next earthquake can linger even when the ground has already settled. The economic consequences of a major earthquake are equal to the physical devastation. The cost of rebuilding can go up to billions, in addition to the disruptiveness of business and services, which may also unfavorably affect the local and global economies. The journey from a major earthquake to full recovery is winding and stomping, taking days, weeks, or even years. 
Yet that category entails a physical reconstruction of infrastructure, community centers, and public care. The capacity to manage and survive, and the fact that the Earth, despite its heart-capturing beauty, is a vivid and sometimes hostile planet at times are crucial elements in ecotourism education. Close to the possibility of the next big earthquake, the information extracted from the area of the new Madrid seismic zone highlights the savage beast that is the Earth, which is unbridled. The facts are clear. The threat of an earthquake, which is big, cannot be ruled out, and it is time to take precautions now. We do not have the responsibility to find a cure, but rather an obligation to call for action for every person and community exposed to the threat. Not to mention, there is no need for the earth to quake to remind us of the blazing fact of the faint voices that keep us in motion. Thank you for watching this video. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.